This tutorial explains how to calculate the standard error in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the data object that we can create with line 2 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that we have created a new data object which is called x and this data object is numeric and contains different numeric values. So let's assume that we want to calculate the standard error of this data object. Then we can apply our own user-defined function and we can create this user-defined function as you can see in lines 4 to 6 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new function object is appearing which is called standard error. And in the next step we can apply this function to our data object x as you can see in line 8 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the bottom that the value 1.911 is returned. And this is actually the standard error of our data object x. So in this first example I have explained how to use base r to calculate the standard error of a vector object. However, it's also possible to use the Blotrix package for this task and this is what I want to show you in the next example starting in line 10 of the code. So if we want to use the functions of the Blotrix package, we first need to install and load the Blotrix package as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed this package already so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. So after running this line of code we are able to use the functions of the Blotrix package such as std.error as you can see in line 13. And within this function we simply need to assign the vector object for which we want to calculate the standard error. So in this case our vector object is called x. And for that reason we can apply line 13 of the code to calculate the standard error using the Blotrix package. So after running this line of code you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the same value was returned as by the user defined function that I have shown you in the first example. So in other words the Blotrix package confirms the result of base R. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.